Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, this complex number from numbers question from 2020. So find the two complex numbers Z1 and Z2 that satisfy the following simultaneous equations. IZ1 is equal to minus four plus three i. Three times z1 minus z2 equals 11 plus 17 i. Write your answers in the form a plus b i. Okay, right, let's have a look. So both complex numbers here, just one complex number in the top one. So it makes sense so to try and work with the top one because it just has one unknown in it, Z1, okay? So what we need to do is get rid of the I from the left-hand side. And if we can get rid of that, we have solved it for Z1. Okay, so there's two ways of, of, of getting rid of it, okay? I could divide that side by i, which means I have to decide, or I have to divide that side by i, and the i and the i cancel, and you're basically left with z1 being equal to minus four plus three i over i. Okay, so I need to divide it in, because I need it in the form a plus b i. So just like any other complex number, um, I could write i as zero plus i if you want, there's no real part to it. So I must multiply above and below by minus i. So zero minus i, if you wish, or just minus i. Okay, so let's work him out. So minus four by zero is zero, minus four by minus i is uh, four i. And then I have uh, three i by zero is zero. And uh, three i by minus i, well plus by minus is a minus 3i squared. And on the bottom, I have 0 by 0, which is 0, 0 by minus i is 0, i by 0 is 0. So I have plus by minus is a minus i squared. Okay, let's sub in for our i squares. So we're going to sub in, that's um, i squared on the bottom. We're going to sub in the minus 1 here for i squared. So I'm getting Z1 is equal to 4i minus 3 times minus 1. And on the bottom, I've minus minus 1. So that's equal to 4i plus 3 over 1. So therefore, I am getting, I'm just going to come up here, Z1 equal to real number first plus imaginary number. Okay, so it's tradition, you write the real bit first and then the imaginary. So for Z1, I'm getting three plus four I. Okay, so that was one way of doing it. There was another way. So, or you could do it this way. So again, I'm going back to I times Z1 equals minus four plus three I. Okay, so again, taking advantage of the fact that I squared is equal to minus one. If I take both of these, sides and I multiply it by i. Okay, then I get i by i is i squared z1 being equal to minus 4i plus 3i squared. So all I've done is basically what I do to one side, do to the other, multiply both sides by i. Okay, and the reason I do that is because i squared is now minus 1. So I'm getting minus 1 times z1 is equal to minus 4i plus 3 times minus 1, or minus z1, sorry, minus z1 is equal to minus 4i minus 3. And then just change the signs all the way across. So you get z1 equals to, and I'm going to write the real part first, and then the imaginary part. Okay, so that was another way of doing it, probably the easier way, but it depended on whether you saw this um, relationship. Okay, so then to finish it off, um, we sub into equation two. Okay, assuming I'm calling him one and him two. So I get three times Z1 minus Z2 is equal to 11 plus 17i, or three times three plus four i minus Z2 is equal to 11 plus 17i. 
three threes are nine plus 12i minus z2 is equal to 11 plus 17i. Uh, minus z2 is equal to 11 plus 17i minus nine minus 12i. Minus z2 is equal to 11 minus nine is two. 17i minus 12 is what's that plus 5i. So therefore z2 is equal to minus two minus five i. Okay, and that's it solved for z1 and z2. So I hope that was okay. Um, bit unusual simultaneous equation with complex numbers, but there you go. Part B, the complex numbers, three plus two i and five minus i are the first two terms of a geometric sequence find or the common ratio of the sequence. Okay, so it's a geometric sequence or is the common ratio. Okay, so what that means is or is the value you will use to hop from one term to the other. So as you know, a geometric sequence is multiplying or dividing, but multiplying by a number. So maybe if I multiply by a half, for example. So four, two, one, a half, a quarter, an eighth, and so on and so forth. That is a geometric sequence, one where you multiply by um, a, what's called a common ratio every time, okay? Um, so how do we find the common ratio? Or, well, it's, it's one term over the one before it, okay? So um, for example, two over four, so that's T2 over T1 will give me the half, or of course I could do T3 over T2, which would be one over two, or any of them, T4 over T3, T5 over T4, whatever. Okay, so in this one, or would be equal to T2 over T1. They've only given me two terms. Okay, so it's not like I have a choice in this particular one. It's five minus I over three plus two I. Okay. Um, and so that's a straightforward multi uh, um, division of complex numbers in rectangular form. So multiply above and below by what's called the conjugate of the bottom. Okay, multiply by the conjugate so that the um, imaginary numbers cancel because you're not allowed to divide by imaginary numbers. And of course, what I do to the bottom, I must do to the top so that I'm effectively multiplying by one and not changing the original equation. Okay, so let's multiply. So five threes, 15, five by minus two i is minus 10 i, minus i by three is minus three i, minus by minus is a plus two i squared. And then on the bottom, three threes are nine, three by minus two i is minus six i, plus six i, and that's exactly why we do it, so that these i terms in the middle cancel. So plus by minus is a minus four i squared. Okay, this is not considered an imaginary number because we get to sub in the minus one, which gets rid of the imaginary part. Okay, so let's keep going with that. So 15, let's sub in my minus one there and my minus one there. So I'm getting 15, was that minus 10 minus three? So minus 13 i uh, plus two times minus one is minus two. And then on the bottom, they cancel. And I end up with nine minus four by minus one plus four. So it's 13 minus 13 i over 13. And then break it up into its real part and its imaginary part. Okay, so it's one minus one i or one minus i. So that's my common ratio, one minus i. So in other words, if I multiply um, three plus two i by one minus i, I'm going to get this second term. So that's your common ratio. And it's basically examining the fact that you know the common ratio is t2 over t1 or t3 over t2. Right, use the Marvis theorem then to find t9, the ninth term of the sequence. Write your answer in the form A plus BI. Okay, so from the log tables for a geometric series, 
we know Tn is the nth term, okay? So there's this Tn formula. So Tn is equal to A or to the power of N minus one. Okay. Um, yeah, from the log tables. A is the first term and or is the common ratio, okay? So the first term in my sequence was three plus two i, you see that? So this is three plus two i, and then my or I just found, which is one minus i, and then n is what term you're finding. So we want t9, okay? So if we're gonna find t9, then my power isn't nine minus one or that is three plus two i times one minus i to the power of eight. Okay, so De Marvis theorem then for complex numbers is how you apply um, a power. So you have to um, write it in polar form first and then um, apply the power. Okay, so this is, this is the De Marvis theorem part. Okay, I just have to park the three plus two i for the minute and I'll multiply it by that in the end, okay? So one minus i in polar form, okay? So you know that um, the modulus r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, okay, or, or x squared plus i squared a plus b i being my polar form, okay? So my a is one and my b is also one. Okay, so it's the square root of one squared plus one squared, which is root two. Okay, so that's my modulus, the distance out from the origin. Sorry, wrong one. It's my distance out from the, mod from the origin. Okay, so just going to draw a quick argand diagram and roughly plot one minus i to see which quadrant it's in. So one minus i, so it's down here somewhere in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so let's let me work out my reference angle. So, so your reference angle is the one that's formed with the with the um, with the x-axis. Okay, so that reference angle theta is equal to uh, b over a, okay? It's equal to the imaginary part over the, over the real part, okay? And sorry, I'm missing the tan bit there. So my b is one, my real part is one. So therefore I get my angle then to be the tan inverse. And it's up to you whether you go in radians or degrees. So the tan inverse of one is 45 degrees. Okay, so the tan inverse of one is equal to 45 degrees, okay? And of course you can do it in, in radians, no bother, and you'll get a quarter pi. Okay, so that's just the reference angle. But as you know, we always, our actual angle of interest is the angle it took, this is our starting line, and it's the angle it goes through to get around to that point. Okay, so therefore to work it out, you take two pi minus a quarter pi, or of course, if you're in degrees, 360 degrees minus 45 degrees. Okay, so therefore theta, our angle of interest, is 360 degrees minus 45 degrees, which is 315 degrees, or two pi minus a quarter pi, which is equal to seven quarters pi. Okay, so in polar form, one minus i is equal to root two, cause, uh, doesn't matter, 315 degrees, plus i sine 315 degrees. Okay, so that's it in polar form. We have to put it into polar form, before we can apply um, De Marva's theorem. So one minus i then to the power of eight. So De Marva tells us to do my modulus to the power and the power times the angle. Okay, so it's saying root two 
to the power and it's eight times the angle. Okay, so I'm going to come up here to finish it. So root two then to the power of eight. So root, root two to the power of eight is 16. And then I'm getting cos eight by 315 is 2520 degrees. And, and I'll, I'll explain that one in a minute, 2520 degrees. Okay, you generally wouldn't leave it like that. You take out the, the all of the 360 degree revolutions in it, okay? Um, but it doesn't matter in this one because we're going to put it into rectangular form. So in other words, I am going to multiply these in now. So I'm going to do 16, make sure you're, I have to just make sure my uh, calculator is in degrees now because I went with degrees. So 16 cos 2520 and I'm getting 16, okay? Plus, and then 16 times the sine of 2520 is 0i. Okay, so for the bit I have up here in the box, 1 minus i to the power of 8, I get 16 plus 0i. Okay, so from here then, okay, I'm going to say t9 is equal to 3 plus 2i times, I'm just going to leave it as 16, I hope that's okay, because 0i is doesn't do anything. So 16 by 3 is 48 plus 32 I. So that is what I'm getting for my ninth term. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.